Okay, so this video introduces a very important concept, and this is the multiplication of matrices. So I can define what it means as follows. So now suppose that we have three vector spaces. Let's say U and V and W. And let's suppose, to be certain, let's set their dimensions are equal to K and L and M. So this is a K-dimensional vector space, this is L-dimensional vector space, this is M-dimensional vector space. Okay, and let's suppose that we have linear maps, linear transformations. Sorry. Map is another word for a transformation. So I'm going to take the first transformation going from U to V, and the second transformation is going from V into W. Then you can obviously combine these two together. So then we can define transformation B a, which will go from U into W. So you have to be a little bit careful here. The transformation BA means you do A first and then B. In other words, you read this way. Right? You do A first and then B, you write it this way. So you'll see the reason for writing it kind of backwards in a minute. So we can define a transformation like this. So A takes you into V, and then B takes you into W. So first question to answer, is this new transformation still linear? Okay. So we have to check the two axioms of a linear transformation. In other words, if I have the transformation BA and I apply it to two vectors u1 plus u2, where these are vectors in u, then what's this? So this is B of A of u plus u1 plus u2, but A is a linear transformation, so this is B of A of u1 plus A of u2. Okay. So here these two things are now vectors in V, but B is a linear transformation, so this is equal to B of A of u1 plus B of A of u2. But this is equal to the combined transformation BA of U1 plus BA of U2. Okay, so that checks out. Satisfies the definition of linear. And you can show that the second one is also works. It's, it's pretty simple. Right? So the second one is that BA applied to some number times the vector U. So first of all, A is linear, so you can write this as B applied to lambda A of U. And again, A of U is some vector in V. But then B is linear, so this is lambda times B of A of U. But this is lambda times the combined transformation BA of U. So that one also checks out. So the answer to my question is yes. So we can combine two linear transformations. And the thing we get is another linear transformation. That's quite simple. But what I want to work out is how do the matrices for these transformations relate to each other? In terms of matrices. And this is where it gets kind of interesting. So we know that these linear transformations can all be given matrices. So the first one will be A11. And here it goes up to A1K, and here it goes down to AL1, and it goes to ALK. And B can be written as the matrix A1, sorry, B, B11 up to B1L, and here it goes down to BM1. Here it goes across to BML. And BA, the combined transformation, 
is some other numbers which I'll call BA11 up to BA1K down to BAM1 and across to BAMK. Okay. So we can give them all matrices like this and what I want to know is how do the numbers in this matrix, the combined rate matrix, relate to the numbers in these two matrices. Now, just to know, how did I know that this one goes up to K and this one goes up to L, and this one goes up to L and this one goes up to N, and so on? In general, you can see it from the previous video if you want it in detail. The number of columns of the matrix A, so that means 1, 2, 3, 4, up to K, that tells you the dimension of the original space. So A is going from U, and U is K-dimensional, so that means A should have K columns like this. So, let me just write this as a note. Okay. So the number of columns equals dimension of the starting space. And similarly, it goes down to L because that's the number of dimensions of the final space. So the number of rows here, 1, 2, 3, up to L, tells you the dimension of V, which is L. The number of rows is equal to the dimension of the final space. Okay, so in order for the transformation to make sense, we need that B must start in the same space that A finishes, right? So if A goes from U into V, then B must start in V. So that means that the dimension here and the dimension there should be the same. So that means that the number of rows of A, because that's the dimension of the final space, should be equal to the number of columns of B, because that's the dimension of the starting space here. So therefore we need that the number of rows of A should be equal to the number of columns of B okay, in order to define multiplication to, to be able to define BA. So this is quite an important thing to check, so you can quite easily check whether it's possible to multiply two matrices together or not. You need that, if you're multiplying BA like this, you need that the number of rows here should be equal to the number of columns here. Then you can multiply. Okay, so let's answer the main question now. What is BA11 in terms of A11 and B11 and so on? So that's what I want to find out. How do A, B, I, J relate to the other numbers A, I, J and B, I, J? Oh, sorry. How do B, A, I, J? Ah. B, A, I, J, sorry. So what's the relationship between the, the numbers in these different matrices? So you can work this out because you know that the, for example, the first column of A, this is equal to the transformation A applied to the vector 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. And we know that the first column of the combination BA, therefore, should be equal to BA applied to 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. But the first column of A, if I go back to my definitions here, the first column of A is this one. 
this is a11, a21, up to al1. And this, therefore, should be equal to b applied to a11, a21, up to al1. But now if I write what is the matrix for b here, then this is b11. Uh, B12 up to B1L, B21, B22 up to B2L, down to BM1, BM2 up to BML, times A11, A21, AL1. And this should be equal to the first column of BA. And the first column of BA is this one here. So this should be equal to BA11, BA21, BAM1. Okay, but we know how to multiply this matrix with a vector, right? To get the first one here, we have to take the dot product, the scalar product of this with this vector here. So therefore, you get that BA. 1, 1 is the sum alpha goes from 1 to L of B1L times A. Sorry, A B1 alpha times A alpha 1. Okay, so it's B11 A11, B12 A21, alpha is 2, up to B1L A L1, alpha is L. Okay, and similarly B A. 1, 2 is the sum alpha goes from 1 to A to L of the next row here. So that is B2 alpha times A alpha 1, okay, and so on. And you can hopefully see the pattern, so this gives you all of the first column of BA, and then you can get the second column of BA in a similar way. This should be equal to BA times the vector 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. And you get similar expressions which you can work out. I won't bother to write them to save time. So in conclusion, what you find is that BA IJ component is equal to the sum alpha goes from 1 to L of B. You can see here, so here is 2 and this is 2. So I is the first component here. B, I, alpha, and here 1 and 1 and 1 and 1. So J is the second component of the A. Okay, so this is the formula that tells us how the matrices of A and B multiplied together. And again, you can interpret this in a nice way if you write it out. So I think I better do this on a new sheet of paper. So just quickly write up what the summary was. So the summary was that B A I J is some alpha goes from 1 to L, B I alpha, A alpha, J. Okay. So if I write out what this matrix is then, so here is the matrix B, that's B11, B12, up to B1 L, B21, B22, up to B2 L, down to B M1, BM2 up to BML. So this is the matrix B. And then we've got the matrix of A, which was A11, A12 up to A1K, A21, A22 up to A2K, down to AL1, AL2, and was to ALK. 
that's A, and this should be equal to the matrix BA, okay, which is BA11, BA12, so BA12, up to BA1K, and BA21, BA22, up to BA2K, and down to BA M1, B A M2, and up to B A M K. Okay, so what does this formula mean here then? If we just take the first example, so if I and J are 1, so here we have B1 alpha. So B1 alpha is the first row of B here. And here we have A alpha 1. So A alpha 1 is the first column of A here. And what this formula says is to find the first element of the matrix BA here, I need to multiply these two together like the scalar product. So this times this plus this times this, this times this. Okay, and I'll just do one more. So let's look at this one over here as well, for example. So 2k, so here i is equal to 2, so b2 alpha, that's the second row here. And j is equal to k, so that's the final column here. Okay. And again, to find this element here, I need to take the scalar product this times this, this times this, up to this times that. Okay, and you do that for the whole matrix. So just to finish, I'll do a simple example, just in case it's not clear. So let me do 2 minus 1, 0, 3, 0, 1, times 1, 3, minus 4, 2, 1, 3, minus 1, minus 2, 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay? So here you can see that A is taking you from four dimensions into three dimensions and B is taking you from three dimensions into two dimensions because of the numbers of rows and columns. So this combination then, A, B times A is going to take you from four dimensions into two dimensions. So that means it will be two here and then four here, like this. Okay. So to find the first number here, I need to do dot product of this with that. So that's two minus three plus zero, so that's minus one. So the first number here is minus one. Okay. And then to find the number here, I have to do this row here with again the first column here. So that's 3, 0, minus 4. It's again minus 1. That's a coincidence. Okay, and then next one I'll do, and then I'll just do it quickly. So the next one is the one here. So that's going to be the top row here times the second column here. So that's 4 minus 1 is 3. And the rest is similar. Okay, so this one is this, 6 plus 3 is 9. This one is minus 2 plus 2 is 0. This one is minus 3. This one is minus 1. And this one is 1. So there we go. So I've taken these two matrices together and multiplied them together and got a resulting matrix and this matrix tells you what you get if you go from u into v using a and then go from v into w using b.